So today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be one of my GPU benchmark videos, but uh, today I'm going to show you how to set up MSI Afterburner to get some frame rate captures. I've had quite a few people ask me how I get the numbers as can be seen in the top left hand corner there. And uh, so today I thought I'd make a video about it. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to download MSI Afterburner. To do that, just uh, Google MSI Afterburner. Now make sure that you download it either from the msi.com website. You can use the Guru3D website as well or TechSpot. Those are also verified uh, websites. But uh, there have been some reports of false websites uh, hosting MSI Afterburner and uh, some of those installs actually contain malware. Right, so once you click on MSI Afterburner there, you get presented uh, with a page similar to this, and you can just click Download Afterburner. Now, yeah, you can't select uh, which version, but uh, if you go to Guru3D, you can select which version you want to download. So for this one, we're just going to download 465 Beta 4. And uh, once uh, downloaded, you can see that there's a zip file with uh, the install file, and you can just uh, double click that and it'll run. Now you'll be asked to uh, select your language. And uh, this is the first step. You'll install MSI Afterburner first, uh, except the license agreement, obviously. And uh, then you need to tick Riva Tuna Statistics Service because that is actually what provides the on-screen display with the frame rate counters and everything. Right, so you can click next and uh, let's just install it in the default uh, location. Right, once MSI Afterburn is installed, you'll get uh, another prompt and this is to install RTSS or Riva Tuna Statistics Server. Once again, just accept and uh, install it in the default location. I prefer not to create shortcuts and uh, well, there we go again. You might be asked uh, to reboot your machine. Just click yes. All right, so I just rebooted my machine. And uh, what's this all about? I did select do not create shortcuts. And uh, yet there's a shortcut. So we'll just open up MSI Afterburner. Now I've already got uh, quite a few settings that are dialed in here. I use MSI Afterburner for two things. First, I overclock and undervolt my GPU just a little bit. And uh, then I also use it for my frame rate capture. I just want to show you quickly what I do with my undervolt. You can just click this icon here and it'll open the curve editor. And uh, this is pretty much what I do. So I've got my GPU set to 1935 at 1000 millivolts. Now this GPU usually runs at about 1078 millivolts at around 1850 megahertz, right? So it's a small uh, overclock and a small undervolt. And uh, this has been stable for me. Then I also just increase my power limit just so that I don't run into any power limit issues. But uh, we'll do another overclocking video sometime soon. Just one thing to note, if you do overclock, uh, just make sure that this uh, startup icon is disabled because if you run into an unstable overclock, you might just go into a boot loop, right? I know that my overclock is uh, pretty much stable, so I'm just going to leave that on. So the first thing you want to do is you want to click settings here. Your afterburner might look a little bit different. Uh, this is just a different uh, skin and uh, the skins you can select from the user interface tab here. So I've just got this uh, cyborg skin by Drerick's design. I just like the, the blue. It goes nice with my background. All right, so let's just uh, start here from scratch. So this is what my general settings look like. I've got it start with Windows. This is actually not enabled once you install it the first time. I've got it a start minimized because obviously I don't want to see it every time. And I've got unlock voltage control and unlock voltage monitoring. Now, if you don't want to do any uh, overclocking or undervolting, then you don't need to change these settings. I uh, also use it to uh, configure a custom fan curve. Right, uh, the part which you'll probably be interested in, seeing that you click this video based on its title, is a uh, monitoring. Now, if you scroll through here, there's quite a few things that you can monitor. It's uh, pretty extensive. So you can see that I've got tick marks next to most of it. Right, so let me just scroll down here without this stupid thing popping up. Now, the tick marks on the left-hand side would be what is shown here. So if I click detach here, just close that. If I click detach there, then this, uh, this thing expands here. And now I can actually see my GPU temp usage, uh, frame buffer usage, all these kinds of things that I've got uh, ticked there. 
right? Uh, but you don't want all of this in your on-screen display. You'll just uh, overwhelm yourself and uh, you don't need all of that, right? So I just want to show, I'm just scrolling down to the bottom here just to show you what I've got. Now you're going to go uh, back into your settings here, going to monitoring, and now you need to select which of these uh, options you want displayed in your OSD or on-screen display. Now this helper banner is quite irritating. So how you do that is, uh, for instance, if you want to monitor your GPU temperature, just make sure that this button here is ticked showing on-screen display. If you untick that, you'll see that it disappears from the properties in OSD there. Then you can just go through all of the options that you want to have shown in your on-screen display. So for me, I've got my GPU temperature, my GPU usage. I don't do frame buffer usage. Uh, then we've got uh, memory usage, uh, core clock, memory clock, and uh, I'm just going to scroll down here slowly so that you can see. I'm not monitoring every CPU core temperature. I do monitor it in my normal MSI afterburner, but not an on screen display. But I've got the overall CPU temperature, which I display in my on screen display, and uh, none of the CPU usages, only overall CPU usage. And then I've got my CPU clock, my CPU power, my RAM usage, and uh, this is actually the part which uh, gives you the frame rates. So you can see here that, uh, sorry about the stupid uh, help icon or help banner that keeps on popping up. I'm gonna try and uh, not let it be too distracting. So for frame rate, uh, you want to tick it in showing on-screen display. You can leave that as text. The frame time, you can also just uh, tick it there. This one needs to be a graph. Right, I'm going to show you now why. And then I've got my averages. This one is text once again. Then the 1% lows, text, and the 0.1% lows are also text. Now, you'll notice that I've got override group name. The reason for that is uh, I want all of these to be grouped according to its function. If uh, I can explain it a little better, I'm just going to go into Cyberpunk here. Now I'm just going to stay in the menu. I've made my on-screen display a little bit bigger so you can actually see what I'm doing. So for instance, I've got a group name called RTX 3080. I'm uh, trying to show you with my mouse pointer, but it's obscured, but maybe you can just uh, get an idea. There, I've got my GPU temperature, my GPU usage, and my power usage. Then I've got a group name called uh, VRAM. Actually, I've got memory clock speed as well under the VRAM group. Not sure why that's not uh, showing up. Uh, so these uh, on the left here, these names are all group names. So if you assign multiple uh, options under the same group name, it'll be right next to each other. All right, uh, let me just uh, show you what I've got. So here you can see that I've got GPU temperature, I've got override group name, which is RTX 3080. The GPU usage is also RTX 3080 and uh, memory usage is set to VRAM. And that's basically what you need to set up to separate uh, all your output. It just makes it a little bit easier for you to, to understand what's going on here. You'll see that, that there's also uh, an override graph name. So this is the name given to the graph once you actually start uh, benchmarking and logging using MSI Afterburner. I don't use that functionality. Just want to show you, this is where you can actually uh, access that file. So once you start the, the benchmark, begin recording and uh, end recording, uh, this is where it'll be saved as, right? So let's just go back here. So my power once again is under RTX 3080. I've got my CPU temperature, just my CPU name there and uh, CPU usage, also the same name. So those two are grouped together. I've got my CPU clock, CPU power as well. And uh, so then all four of these would be under the same group in the same line in your on-screen display. Then I've got my RAM group name just to make it uh, easier for people to see. Then here I've got my uh, frame rate my frame time and my frame rate average. Now I just want to show you that if you change this to text, let's just hit apply there, it should change now. Now you can see that the frame time is now six milliseconds, right? Uh, but it does not give you an indication of what the history was. So I prefer to set uh, that to graph. And once again, we hit apply. And now you'll see at the bottom there, we've got a frame time graph. The reason why I prefer the graph is because the graph is continuous, whereas all these other options are polled every one second. Now you can decrease this, but that just puts a 
additional load on your system and you might introduce uh, additional stuttering, which is never ideal. So that's pretty much it, right? So you just assign the parameters to groups and uh, how you want it to be shown in your on-screen display. Now that still does not bring up the screen that you see in the top left-hand corner there, or most of the screens at the moment. So what I do is uh, it just uh, cleared all the settings there. I've got a toggle on screen display as alt and uh, backslash. You can also see that I've got begin recording and end recording. Now, why would you need that? Now, let me show you if I end the recording. I don't have my frame rate average, my 1% lows or my 0.1% lows. If I press the buttons for start recording, then these uh, options actually appear or these performance metrics. Right, so what I've got here, once again, I had to close my stupid settings. Uh, I've got Alt page up for begin recording and end recording is Alt and page down. So let me just show you what happens if I press Alt and page up. It actually resets the benchmark run and uh, Alt and page down will stop the average 1% lows and 0.1% lows from changing. If you press uh, Alt and page down again, uh, those parameters will disappear. If you want to have them show up again, just press Alt and page up. Now you can use uh, any uh, key combination here that you want. Uh, these are just uh, some of the ones that are selected. Then next up, we'll just open up uh, RTSS. It's this little icon here, River Tuna Statistics Server. Uh, you can leave everything on its uh, default. I've just got a frame rate limit of 164 frames per second. Uh, I actually need to disable that when I do benchmark runs. Uh, it's just because I've got a 165 hertz panel. It's a G-Sync panel and I don't want uh, the frame rate to go higher than my refresh rate. So I just limit it to 164 when I game. The rest you can also just uh, leave on default. You can enable the full let me just show you if you disable the full, then there's no background uh, on these performance metrics and it makes it a little bit harder to, to read. So I just enable the full here. The reason why I minimize is sometimes it does not apply. And now you can see I've got a nice border around my performance metrics, which makes it easier to see in my YouTube videos. Then the last uh, setting that I play around with is the size. So you can actually just adjust this slider here. It'll show you how big the text would be in relation to your screen size. And uh, the reason why I have to change that is if I record at 1080p, I can actually leave it uh, on this zoom level. But so uh, you can see at 1440p, this box becomes a little bit smaller. Now, if I change my resolution to 4K, that just becomes uh, unreadable almost. Uh, this is what it'll look like at 4K. This is what I usually try to keep it at. So, so if you've seen some of my videos where this box seems to shrink, that's because I changed resolutions without zooming in. All right, and there you've got my basic tutorial on how to set up uh, frame rate captures using MSI Afterburner. I know it's not the normal benchmarking video, so it might not get uh, a lot of views. I don't really care about that. It's just that some people asked me about it, so I thought I'd uh, give a short tutorial. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and as always, we hope to see you in the next one.